Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be here with you today. And we have a special subject on for you today of some things that have happened in Barbara's life this last two days that are pretty significant and how she's dealing with it and uh, and the memories and stuff that it has invoked from past situations that she's shared with you in the past. So before we get to get that, I am Carol Henderson with Life by Design Studio, and I hope that y'all have brought your nice warm drink or cold drink, whatever, <laughs> and, and, and just settle in because this, this is a significant subject, and we are going to show you how Barbara is circling up, how she's making every day better, no matter what the circumstances are. So I'm here with my wonderful co-host. Um, get your box of Kleenex ready. <laughs> you too, Barbara. <laughs> so that, yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Barbara Ellison, uh, founder of Wellness Playroom for the best version of you. You know, and life happens to all of us. And are we being the best version of us? And in this past week, it's not, it's been different because it will. And, and, you know, I don't know if I've made this I, until right at this moment. Sometimes when you're talking about something, you don't make the connection to all the things. Se several months ago, I was invited to do a presentation called the four chaplains about four chaplains that were in World War II and the legend of the four chaplains. Well, this coming Wednesday, this week, we are doing the presentation. Last week, I went and did the rehearsal. I, it's emotional of the loss of these four chaplains and the loss of the men at sea and in the war. And I made the connection between where they were talking about and my dad was stationed out of St. John's, Newfoundland, where this door, the, it was the Dorchester, and it, it sank. And they called it Torpedo, Torpedo Junction, Torpedo, Torpedo Alley. And last week during the rehearsal, I went, you know what, that's exactly where Daddy was. He was in the Canadian Navy going across the north, you know, off the shores of Newfoundland and uh, the out, Outer Banks. And he was on destroyer duty. And they were they were guarding the convoys, and that's exactly what this the ship, the Dorchester, was. So I've had the emotion of that because I've been practicing it and doing it, and then to do it in front of a part of the audience um, of the chorale, the the music part of it. Well, then Saturday had a great day. Went out for a Harley ride, in memory of a friend of a dear friend of ours, but it was a memorial ride. So there was the memorial ride and it was really fun, but we did do a little tribute because we were, it was in memorial for a friend that had passed away. I came home to find my dog. Didn't expect, but she looked like she had just lay down to go to sleep and just didn't wake up. Yesterday, so I was dealing with dealing with that and I was here by myself. Nobody was home. What am I going to do? And I just was so teary. Well, that brought up all the memories of when David passed away and all those same things. And I'm thinking I'm sitting here going to myself, but Barbara, this is a dog. Yeah, but she was part of my life because I got her just after David died. Well, and she and was I got a her. constant companion. She was for my for Many 12 years, years. 12 years yeah 12 years and to just come home and find her after going on a memorial ride going out to the war museum where so this is like all connected this this week and then yesterday friends that we we had planned this weeks and weeks ago to go um up to the lake got to the lake and everybody was like oh barb i'm so sorry to hear about daisy and my girlfriend's dog, her pass, her dog passed away on Thursday. So we were just, well, this morning, 
I was like, I know I turned my alarm on. I know I did. I know the alarm went off, but if I, you never got, I, and I never got up and we came on and I just, we were supposed to have a meeting and it was like, okay, well, there went that. <laughs> and obviously it was like, oh, one thing, but they all were all led together. And it's like, what do you do when life happens like that? Yeah. And I think so many people are going through similar things, maybe not compressed within a day or two, but similar things. I mean, y'all know that we did, you know, surgery, fires, dog, yes, more stuff, you know, and it's just like all the things. And then, you know, now our grandson's coming to stay with or has come to stay with us for the, the summer. And then a friend came up from Dallas and, you know, it's just like, and those are all good things. They're not like Barbara's. They're, these are good things. Well, fires weren't good things, but good thing. New puppy. Right. <laughs> but it's right. still kind of like, Lord, you know, how much more are you going to put in my wheelbarrow? <laughs> exactly. The thing is, you know, and then, you know, and then of course, all the people that said, oh, gee, Barbie, you know, because it is, it's, it's the loss of your friend. Yeah. Really a pet can actually be more because it's unconditional love. There's never any tension. There's never an argument. There's never angry feelings. There's never anything. I mean, I don't care if I scolded her for getting into, like, she was a paper chewer. Mm. She was a what? A paper, oh, paper a chewer. Paper chewer. And uh, she also chewed chocolate once. And she chewed chocolate. And so she was a chewer. And I would come home and there would be literally paper all over my office, everywhere, paper. And even when I scolded her, two seconds later, she was up and coming and cuddling with me. So there was never any of those things. And that's the difference of having a pet. As a, but, and yet losing her brought up all those things of me wandering around after David died and just not knowing what to do with myself of just the tears and then letting the tears flow and still going out and doing the fun things, but it was still the little things. Like yesterday I needed to go down to the Dollar General and normally it would have been, okay, Daisy, let's go down. We're just gonna go down to the store because she loved being in the car. And I went, oh yeah, right. She's not here to do that anymore. All these little things that I just, there was me driving to the Dollar General, tears rolling down my face because I miss, I'm missing my little companion. And she was my long distance, and she was my long distance. I mean, we rode, a, we did a lot of long distance stuff together. Went to Pennsylvania several times, went to Washington, DC, and she was, she was my travel companion. And so, you know what? So now I'm just kind of like, all right, we're gonna talk about it and I'm gonna be okay with it. And yet I'm sad. So. Well, and, and the thing is, it is okay to cry and it is okay to cry yeah. in front of people. people. So often we think, oh, I can't do this in front of so-and-so or, yeah. or what if I go out and I break down uh, when my dad died, I, yeah. I had still had my modeling agency. I'm at, I'm in one of the TV station manager's office. Now, yeah. Holly and I were together. We were working, we were there talking to him about an event that we do or did that was a big event, major advertising. They were partners, you know, it, well, I used to bring agents in from all over the world to an event here in Amarillo. Uh, we had to have like eight or 10 agents come in to see, you know, do it to do a convention, which is pretty amazing for a small, smaller community. Usually you do that in Dallas or LA or something, yeah. which we did end up doing it in LA after a while, but, that's another story, but I'm sitting there in the office, we're doing business, and, and we knew Rick well uh, from other endeavors, but uh, we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, tears, I'm not sobbing, I'm not making noise, but tears are just tears. running down my face, and he looked, he said, are you okay, and Holly looked at him, he said, her dad died this week, yeah. you know, but I mean, it's just, there, there, there was, I, I won't say no emotion to it, but there was no emotion. It was just there suddenly. I couldn't control it. I'm like, oh Lord, I'm glad I'm in Rick's office and not some businessman that I don't know. <laughs> you know? No. 
Exactly, exactly. So just feel, so I guess I think that what the gist is of this is to just feel the emotion, mm -hmm. tell somebody what you're feeling yeah. and be okay with it. Yeah, be and, authentic. They're, they're, and, they may be going be through authentic. their own stuff. Exactly. I mean, just I think, like Barbara and her friend that they both lost their dogs this week, within a, within days, a day. day. Within a day. So, yeah, yeah. And, you know, because, and it, it, and it just, that's where the miracle of comfort, that's where it, on that unfolds because everybody else has gone through it. Yeah. Or will. Or will, or will go through no, it. None of us, it's, none of us, is not none of us are exempt. <laughs> none of us are exempt. Um, and just the outreach. And then of course the dealing with, well, where, are you going to get a do another dog? And I'm like, you know, and it was two people. One of them said, oh, you're going to get a dog right away. And the other one said, no, it's going to take a little while. <laughs> two of them, we were standing in the same conversation. The thing is that I did, that, you know, I think all of you know um, that I live in a fairly big household. I mean, we're down to eight. We were 15, but now we're down to eight. But we have numerous pets. And so yesterday it was like, all right, Barbara, you have got to go. I mean, you're not going to stop walking. And I, and I enjoyed walking. Daisy and I, we were great walkers and we would walk a lot and we would go for miles. So yesterday it was like, all right, well, Winston, the Basset Hound, the family Basset Hound said, I said, well, when, Winston, you're a little overweight, you're elected. And out we went. Did he enjoy it? And I think it, we start. We started. We started. Yeah, we started. With, I started with him on Saturday night because I said I've, I need to go out and just clear my brain. And so, so I took him around the block. Well, then yesterday we went around two blocks, and I'm thinking, yo, know, and he. I think he enjoyed it. Well, I'm. I'm saying he enjoyed it. Well, he I'm needs to build him. up. You know, he I mean, bassets are not the most up. active dogs on the planet. <laughs> But you know, I mean, I think he was happy. Uh, and then met a little met a little girl who I would always see with Daisy, and she said, "Oh no, Daisy." And I said, "Well, this is Winston." And it was like, "Oh, okay. Can I can I pet him?" It's like, "Yes, he is very friendly." And so she just was like, "Okay," because I would see her because she's one of the little neighbor girls. She said, "Oh no, Daisy," and that's all she said. No, da oh no, Daisy, <laughs> and because she knew her. And so, and that was okay too. So just, yeah, it's going to be different. Yeah. But for right now, so I, 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 went from, I went from having a 13 pound, you know, little terrier kind of terrier chihuahua mix to having a basset hound who is like 80 pounds. He weighs that much. I think so. I'm oh, pretty wow. sure he does. He's a, he's a big dog. He's a, he, but, but he's low to the ground because he's a basset hound. Right. Like their basset hounds are very they're full they're full they're, they're 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 solid dense they're solid. yeah they're dense yes. i mean uh and i mean his ears flop on the ground but you know but it, it really was okay so his ears flop so i'm um so yeah so it's going to be okay so he's going to be the little miracle of me of uh, just letting it unfold and so i'm i'm going to be so we'll see how over the summer and, uh, but so, but so oh, when have you have a loss, don't stop, don't stop doing what you're doing. Like I like to walk and I like to walk. So I said, well, I volunteered, I volunteered Winston. <laughs> don't you love being voluntold? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 Yeah. So I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, your personality science. Yeah. Guru. Uh, your personalities and, and other personalities. When somebody is in this situation, how is the best way for a person to approach them and say, what about how do, you know, all those question things. How, what is the best way to approach and, them? And sometimes it's to just being there. And lots of lots of times, it is just being there and a slight touch. 
and it just shows empathy no matter what kind of yo no matter what kind of the personality is they're like like the k personalities they don't like to be touched so if you can just so if you know that they're like that or if you don't know you just quietly come up beside them and just it is just kind of an empathy a feeling and that but that lots of times they'll reach out to you and they'll say oh yeah and they'll hug and whatever and so there's all different ways of doing that i remember when my mother-in-law passed away and heard my father-in-law at the time was like what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? You know, they had been married for 50 some odd years. What am I going to do? And I looked at him and I said, well, you know what? Right now we're going to go home and cry together. And he looked at me and he went, I can do that. And that's all he said. I can do that. And we did. We went home. We sat on the couch. We held hands and we just cried together. And so they'll and, and if and if that happens, okay, great. Just cry with them. You know, sometimes you don't have to say anything. Just cry with them. Yes. So yeah. Absolutely. Good. So that's true. That's the same thing, whether it's a people or a dog. That people or a dog, just cry with them. Because that's or a cat. Or a cat. Yeah. It's sad. Or in my case, a chicken. Because you for your case, a chicken. We exactly. have some chickens that, you know, I mean, my husband sits with Ginger and they sit and visit. And, they visit with each know? other. Exactly. Yeah. And that's going to be a loss. And I mean, and she's, I mean, I like Ginger. I mean, she yeah. struts her stuff. She, she struts she's her stuff. Pretty she's or not queen pretty. Of, she's the queen of the, the queen of the barnyard. And so, you know, you just, and that's, and I think that's just, don't be afraid to remember. And when I think you, that's yeah. something that, that we feel when somebody's going through something that we might bring up a hurt, uh, you know, but yeah. I mean, the hurt's already there. The, the, so, the, yeah. You know, just, like one of my friends, she's, oh, Barb, I didn't mean to set you off. And I said, no, it's okay. I mean, I'm going to be teary. I mean, she was my companion for 12 years after my husband died. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that's okay too. I mean, don't, don't let it re remember that life goes on. Mm -hmm. So you can't let it color everything. But allow it, allow those feelings of loss, Al allow those feelings, but then remember the good, the funny things that she would do. Well, and oh. just like this, don't be afraid to talk about it. And don't be talk afraid about to talk them. about it. And, and that's, that's what I told Barbara before we started today. I said, you know, I think if you're ready, I think we need, you know, because we had some stuff that we were going to bring today, yeah. bring to you, because Barbara had researched some wonderful things. And I said, if, you know, if you're willing to talk about it, I think, I think, you know, this is something, you know, that we're raw and real. We don't, you know, yeah. And I, and I think one of the biggest things of why we do things like this is that we want people to know that they're not alone. Yes. So right now, if you have lost somebody, if you have lost a spouse or a child, we know right now, I know people that have lost a child. Yeah. The grandfather lost the grandson in a car. He ran, he ran over his grandson. Oh. Nothing can be. So the funeral was just, so that was part of this. The, I, this has all been this week. <laughs> That's all of this. And knowing that, that to be a grandparent and to lose, be the cause of losing a child. Mm -hmm. And that has nothing compared to losing a dog. And yet it's all personal yeah. and it's okay to be personal. And then for, you know, like, and my, one of my first thoughts was, oh, if I had been here, could I have helped it? And then of course, that I would have just been like, more traumatic. That would have been even more. So then it was like, oh, I am so grateful. I wasn't here because it looked like she just lay down and went to sleep. Well, in, in my case, Barbara tried to reach out to me and I had just, was it that I just sat down to eat? You with just sat down to it. Yes. And I'm like, uh, and it was, it was kind of a, 
for lack of a better Something term, that you can be saying. counseling friends. Yeah. Meeting, yeah. but we were eating. And, you know, and I'm like, oh, Barbara, you know, <laughs> it's like, right. I, I, there was not a way to have broken away to even let her cry on my shoulder. Sure. And, yeah. and so the minute we got out of there, I, I was on the phone, I mean, oh, yeah. in the car going, are you okay? Are you, are you okay? Oh. And my sister called me yesterday and she said, are you okay? And I said, oh, well, I will be, but I'm out, I, we're out boating. And so we did have a good time. But then this morning it was like, obviously I needed to stay in bed because well, and rest, I, rest. I, I and rest. A meeting is a meeting. You can see meet, yeah. meeting. this is a meeting. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just a meeting. So you can't, so, but I am going out for lunch today. So right. it's like, you know, so it's going to be, it's going to be, so just life does go on. Yes. Oh, that was the biggest thing. Life goes on. Life goes on. I don't care what your loss is. Go on. Unless it's your life that was lost. If, if you're, if you're alive, it's your, if you, yes, if you, if you, if you, and life, life still alive, goes on. But no, life still goes, life on. still goes on. You're just yeah. not here for us to see you going on. Yeah. But so it, I think that's it the biggest thing. On. Yeah. You are soul. a spirit. You live yes. in a body and you have a soul. Have a soul. And so your spirit and your soul live on for eternity. For uh, so, you know, make the most of this life because you can't make any changes once you're gone. Done. Right. So everyone. This has been, you know, and so if if you're if you're if you're right now if you're dealing with something, I mean, it can be dealing with the loss of a career, like I do to deal with when people lose their career. Yeah, yeah, they lose their job. Well, both and don't them. you and Regina also do some great grief counseling? We both we do, and some, and Sherry. I mean, and all three of them have been widows. Of we're so, we're all. all I, I'm not in that club. Family. Thank you, Jesus. But, yes. Uh, so but, it's but it's funny. because it's different and as much as people want to sympathize with you until you have been through it you mm -hmm. just don't know yeah. that those things so that's why it's so important to have that's why carol and i said you know and carol carol was the one that suggested it i was just going to plow through and carol said no barb yeah but we need to talk about this and you know brought up all of the things that have happened for the last week and then the memories of my dad and then your memory memories of david but you know what and that's okay and now it's been cathartic so this has been good so thank you for listening <laughs> it does listening. it helps to talk it out it helps to even talk if it you're out. talking it out to somebody you just happen to be doing it on facebook to an audience yeah yeah so a couple of things if any of you needs to talk it out please put it in Reach the chat because like I said, Barbara, Sherry, and, and Regina all do some grief counseling. And Kelly English, who came on our, uh, yeah. well, Regina yeah. did. And well, all three yeah. of them, four yeah. of them have been on our uh, Thoughtful Thursdays uh, or Aging Experts podcasts. So you can go watch those. But if, if any of you are needing grief counseling due to the loss of somebody or, or some some you know, pet or a person uh, let us know because we can hook you up with with kelly or with any one of these three women and you know but put it in the comments put it in the chats tell your friends about this because yeah, they feeling? may need to hear it uh so yeah. many people and divorce people right. think that oh well it was a divorce it was your choice well yeah. sometimes yes sometimes, sometimes it was sometimes not. even if it's your choice doesn't make it any easier right it, exactly. it doesn't make it any easier so so definitely put it in the chat okay. we will get you hooked up with someone who can help somebody uh, to talk to yeah yeah somebody to talk to somebody to be with so do uh do pass that that passes on because it's important that we don't get lost in the well of grief and, yeah. and if you don't move on, if you don't talk to somebody, you can get lost because it can get to be a really deep hole. Oh, uh, yes. Let me tell you. Yeah. And so on that note, if if you enjoyed this, please share it with your friends. Share it with somebody you think that they need it. Um, do the thumbs up, click like. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, please do the thumbs up and subscribe ring the little bell and you'll see when I have things that I've put up, it will notify you. 
So anyway, y'all have a wonderful day and circle up. Don't let you. don't let the grief put you in a little whirlwind down the drain. Yeah. So love y'all. See you soon. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.